Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of me reacting to scary animations and maybe telling you guys relatable stories from those animations of things that have happened in my own life. Who we have right now is Llama Arts, and if you guys want to check out their channel, I will leave the link to all their videos in the description box below. But no more talking, guys. We're going to check out some good animations today. If you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. First video we have of today's episode is called True Craigslist Horror Story Animated, and I do have a story for this, but it's nothing interesting like I used to sell stuff on Craigslist when I was broke as a joke I just needed like some extra cash so I'd be like N64 game for sale or skateboard for sale or this t-shirt for sale or my skid mark underwear for sale the only time it was ever creepy is when a guy asked me to meet him to buy the skateboard he wanted me to meet him like at a spot behind like a railroad trolley track thing and it was like behind this weird strip clubby building and I don't know it just looks sus but he just wanted to ride the skateboard around like the open parking lot. But yeah, that was the only time where I thought it was really creepy because the location was pretty shady, but he just wanted to do some things. And you know, I was just very paranoid about stuff. But yeah, this is called True Craigslist Horror Story. So let's check it out. I was looking for a car to buy for my son for his 18th birthday. I was searching all the typical car websites, cars.com, eBay Motors. They were all overpriced as expected. Craigslist was the only place to find an actual deal. About a week into my search, I found an 03 Toyota Camry. It had 67,000 miles, no accidents, no damage, and good condition for only 3,500. Wow, okay. This seems like a steal for such a reliable car That's a with pretty such good deal. mileage. The seller lived about 10 miles from me, which was a reasonable drive when looking for a car. I gave him a call to set up a time to come check it out. The man sounded normal on the phone. He assured me that there were absolutely no oh God. problems with the car. Why does he look so freaking creepy he already? He himself as Bob. A guy selling you a car at that steel price and his name is Bob? Run! I brought along 3500 in cash, even though I planned on wiggling down the price as much as possible. I pulled up the dirt road to Bob's property about 15 minutes early. It was a tiny little house with a decent sized property, only because it was a bit far from the nearest neighbors. The garage was open, so I walked over to see if anybody was inside, but except for an unusual amount of car parts, it was empty. The car was nowhere in sight. The only car on the property was an old pickup truck. I went over to the front door to check the house numbers. It was the right address. The doorbell button was missing, so I knocked That's on the front odd. door. I knocked for exactly five minutes before deciding to give the man a call. So I dialed his number, and I heard the sound of a cell phone ringing from inside the house. Ooh! I was extremely confused at this point. Now I knew I had the right house. I didn't understand why, if he was home, why he wasn't answering. I decided I had to take a peek through one of the windows to see if anybody was inside. Why would you do that? Peering why would you glass, do that? I couldn't really see much, as it was pretty dark inside the house. I saw a very old-fashioned dining room set. But across from that, I saw Ooh. somebody standing at the back door of the house, staring Oh, outside. that's creepy! I figured that must have been Bob. Why is so he just looking at him window, through the thing? But he didn't even move. There was no gate or anything to the backyard. It was just a wide open yard, since this wasn't a rural area. I simply walked around the house to the backyard. I didn't understand how he couldn't hear me. Bro, this is like the creepiest setting ever. This dude must want that car bad. I just steal that guy's truck and just drive home. Back door, I made a shocking realization. The figure standing by the door <gasps> was a taxidermied human being. Oh! I straight back the way I came and back to my car. Oh I shit! I got some goosebumps. Off. The blinds to the window I had peeked into had been shut, but I could see two of the blinds bent open. Oh, I got Somebody goosebumps from my goosebumps! You can Bro. probably guess I had the gas pedal to the floor the whole way home. The whole situation still makes no sense. That doesn't all make any parts, sense at all! The fact that there was no Toyota Camry, the taxidermied human being, the fact that there was no car there leads me to believe that whoever that man was wasn't planning on selling me anything. And that also leads to the disturbing thought that I was very close to becoming a lifeless <laughs> statue staring out that man's oh, back Oh, that gives me the heebie-jeebies. Maybe he just wanted the guy to see his art, you know? Maybe he just wanted him to see his work. Like, he was so impressed with his taxidermy human figure 
that he was like, man, I gotta call some sucker up. That is actually legit terrifying though. We're starting off on a good note. <laughs> Wow, okay, so that actually trumps any Craigslist type deal I've ever had. I've never had any like stiff taxidermy thing. I mean, when I sold my stuff, I got a little stiff, but that's about it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm so dumb, but next up, guys, we got True Craigslist Horror Story 2. So maybe this one will up the ante. This story took place a long time ago. That back first in one was really good, though. When Craigslist was I'm in impressed. its early years. Many wouldn't know, but back in those days, Craigslist was a lot different. It was a lot more so an online garage sale, or just a place where people would list old things that still had some value that they were willing to give away. I got a basketball hoop, a hockey net, and a spoiler for my car all free in perfect condition in that same year. You'd be lucky if you found something like that these days. Anyway, me and my son were dying to buy a hockey net so we could practice in the cul-de-sac we lived in. For the record, this was before I got that free one I mentioned. Wouldn't you know it, on Craigslist there was an ad for a slightly used regulation size hockey goal for only $50. Is that good? I don't know anything about hockey, guys. Is that really good? It came with a puck and two slightly used hockey sticks. Oh, okay, that is good. I still have a picture of that ad to this day. It seemed like the perfect deal, but he lived about two hours away. I called the number he had listed, and he sounded pretty normal on the phone. He had a pretty deep dark voice, but nothing that would be off-putting. I remember his voice being a bit emotionless. He agreed to meet halfway due to the distance, said he'd put the stuff in the back of his pickup truck. He said he could only come after he got off from work though, which was much later in the day, way past dark. We agreed to meet at some rest stop off the highway. Me and my son, who was 11 at the time, took my wife's minivan, the only car that would be able to fit that huge thing. Can't let this asshole sit in the front with you dead! Within an hour, we were at the truck stop, which was empty at this God. hour, but was decently lit was by three dad. big light He posts. probably put me in the trunk. I parked right under one of the lights and waited. I'm sorry, but like, you're doing this to yourselves. You're writing your own horror story. It's raining, it's nighttime, you're at a freaking three light rest stop. What is this?! A pickup truck pulled in off the highway right on time. He stopped right in front of me. I went over to his window, but then noticed there was nothing in the back of his truck. Uh, you soon. You Steve? He asked me. Yep, that's me, I said. Alright, my buddy's bringing in the stuff with his truck. The what? guy pulled up behind my car and put it in park. Oh! I suddenly had a bad feeling. I told my son to get back in the car and lock every door except mine. And get Two the more strap. pairs of headlights came off the highway into the lots, surely enough pulling up next to me. And, not Two surprisingly cars? at this point, there was no hockey equipment in either <gasps> one of them. Oh man, my heart that was is racing. terrifying. I was worried. Not for me, but for my young son who I for some reason brought with me on this trip. How hard do you think he shat his shorts inside of that car at that exact moment? A group of large men mixed with heavy set and muscular physiques stepped out of the two pickup trucks behind the first one. They eyed me from head to toe, giving that typical intimidation stare down. Maybe they just want to do a hockey match in the parking lot. sunglasses said in a deep voice, Where's the money? I instantly pulled out my wallet and handed it to him, begging him to just let me and my son go. He pulled out like a hundred dollars and was pissed, expecting more. <laughs> he then sent two of his goons or whatever to get my son. What? At this point I screamed and begged that for son him ain't not worth to shit. him. One of the men broke the glass to the minivan back door, and I vividly remember the disturbing, heartbreaking screams of my young son. What happened next was... What I can only explain to be a miracle from God answering my prayers. A car was entering the lot from off the highway. All the men stopped and turned to look at it. As it got closer, my heart literally dropped in excitement. It was Superman? As I saw it was a police car. Oh. The light suddenly began to flash as he got close enough to see what was going on. All of the men were back in their trucks within seconds, speeding off down the highway. Well, at least two of them. The truck in the back was caught immediately by the police car, and backup arrived shortly. I explained everything to them, and they got the men that were caught to rat out on the others surprisingly quickly. I guess luckily the guys in the back truck weren't very loyal to whoever their leader was. Oh, snitches. If they even had any They're type dead. of leader. These guys are marked. 
believe it or not, I had a police escort all the way home to make me and my son feel safer. I don't want to get into all the legal stuff, but I'll just say that all of those men except for one was caught, and I'm pretty sure that was the driver of the first pickup truck. Needless to say, my Craigslist days weren't over at that point, but I have always been much more protective of my son, and much more cautious of Craigslist meetings since then. Well, I hope you guys learned a good lesson there. Never play hockey. Next video of today's episode is called Scary Ouija Board Stories Animated, and I will never in my life ever use a Ouija board for whatever reason. I don't care who I'm trying to reach out there. I'll call them or something, but I'm never using a Ouija board to do anything. My sister and her friends scared the hell out of me a long time ago when I was a kid because they said they used it at their friend's house. And after they used that Ouija board, they swore on their mama's and daddy's titties that their place was haunted. Like right after they used that Ouija board, they said that weird shit was happening in their place and they hid the Ouija board under the couch and then it would just be on the table the next day. And like, I don't know how much of it was true, but they really spooked me into never using a Ouija board, and I will never mess with that. Let me know if you guys have ever used that in the comments down below. But I'm too much of a giant flappy pussy to be using that. But let's check out this story, and let's see if it's scary. Ever since I can remember, we've always had one of those old vintage Parker Brother Ouija boards sitting in our closet collecting dust. That's not good. That's a kid, not a good thing. I always wondered what it was. From the box, it seems like a horrible board game. Until one day I found out what a Ouija board really is, and immediately dug it out of the closet. That I makes me feel uncomfortable. I insisted on my brother trying it out with me, and eventually got him to play along. We put our hands on the planchette, and I began asking the typical cliché questions like, Is there anybody there? And, Can you answer me? What are you guys doing? Like, you guys are kids. Like, go play checkers. You know, go throw a baseball around. Stick your fingers in each other's assholes. Why are you playing with a Ouija board? Other than my brother jokingly moving the planchette around to imitate an answer from some kind of entity, there was no... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry about that last one. That was pretty vulgar. <laughs> Stick fingers in what? <laughs> what? Who does that? Real response. After getting bored, we put the game back in the box. I did a little research that night to find out how to make Ouija boards work. What are you doing, kid? Many people said Stop online weird. that the most ideal environment when using a Ouija board is in a dark room only lit by candles. So when my parents weren't home, I managed to gather like six or seven candles and convince my brother to try it one more time. Your mama's gonna whoop your ass for using all her candles! I lit the candles and set them around the table in the dining room with all the lights out. We tried one more time. I asked again if there was anybody there. The planchette began to move. I told my brother to stop moving it, but he swore he wasn't. Okay, let me ask you guys something. So they asked that question, is anybody there? What if it goes to the letters N and O? Then what? Is that an oxymoron? Is that like a contradiction? If there's nobody there, is there somebody there because they moved it to the N and the O? Or is there nobody there because the spirit answered no? Answer me that! I told him to move his hand away, and he did. It kept moving. My brother thought I was messing with him, but I didn't pay attention. The planchette landed on the word, <gasps> yes. Oh. I was only nine, so I was legitimately shitting myself. <laughs> my brother had to take over. I was pooping my question, butt cheeks. Are you a good spirit? There no. was a five second pause before my brother's hand moved along with the planchette to the word, we both looked at each other, and at this point, I ran to my room and shut the door behind me. But he continued on with the so-called game. That guy got big steel balls. I heard his muffled voice come from down this in the kid, however, when nah. all of a sudden I heard him screaming at the top of his lungs. I ran back downstairs to see what was wrong. He was holding up his shirt, revealing a small <gasps> open wound that almost looked like a claw mark. What? He told me to set the fireplace immediately, and I obeyed. Did he, he threw jump the thing in the, fire? in the fireplace oh. and told me to never speak of what happened to anybody. We have never used a Ouija board since. Wait, that was it? That was it! What? Next video of today's episode is called The Motel. And motels are always creepy because you never know who's in the next room or who was in the room before you. So let's check this out. And let's I was 19 spooked. years old at the time, working at a sketchy motel. The motel was pretty run down, and the majority of people who stayed there were locals that were just doing things they weren't supposed to be doing. 
Oh, what the? Doing things they weren't supposed to be doing? Is there a bag over that guy's head? If I saw that in the window, you bet your sweet ass I'm not calling the police either. I'm driving right off. Let's just say the cops came by multiple times. Oh, before. God! I worked as... He just casually shot that fool! Both a front okay, desk person the checking in these creeps all hours of the night, and as a housekeeper who got to clean up their nasty, vomit-smelling rooms afterwards. One afternoon, I was working as a housekeeper in the second building of the motel on the backside furthest from the office. I hated working over there because it not only had the most worn down rooms, but it was always pretty vacant over there and way too quiet for comfort. Mm. I began cleaning one of my last rooms and wanted to get done in a hurry because it was getting late. Yeah, of course. I was washing the mirror in the room that I was cleaning <gasps> and all of a sudden oh my God. I saw a man in the reflection staring at me. He was mid fifties, dirty, with long, greasy hair. Oh, if I saw that in Startled, the mirror, I screamed, man. "Oh my God!" I told him he scared me. The room I was currently cleaning was vacant, so there was no reason why this man should have been in there watching me clean. However, we just had a meeting on customer satisfaction, and my boss was really pressuring us to be more polite and help the guests any way we could. At a motel? Hell no. Uh, sir, I asked him cautiously. Uh, can I get you anything? Towels? The man just stared back at me with a crooked grin and held out his hands to me. I thought maybe he was handing me a tip for cleaning his room earlier, but when I looked down, I saw he was holding a hundred dollar bill. Alarm started going off in my head. No one tips a hundred dollars on a forty dollar a night room. The man just smiled and said his name was Terry. He said he was staying in the room next door with his wife Sherry and sort of joked about their names rhyming. He smelled like car oil and alcohol. When I asked him why he was trying to hand me a hundred dollars, he laughed deep in his throat and said, Me and my wife were watching you, and we just wanted to have fun with you. Ooh! Damn, they wanted to get saucy that night. They wanted to do the three to tango type like shit. like my heart jumped into my throat. Um, no, I, I can't do that, sir. I'm sorry. I wanted to run out of the room screaming, but he was blocking the door. A hundred dollars too? Insulting. The man smiled again, taking on a softer tone of voice, and invited me to come into his room to meet his wife, just to talk as friends. I nervously told him no again, and that I had a lot of work to do for the day. You know what I would do, guys? I would just say, yeah, come on, let's go. And then as soon as we get out the door, run! Just run! You look like you're capable, or at least run and scream, so you're getting somebody's attention. You don't want to be cornered in a room and be like, no, no, no. You kind of want to be like, all right, sure. As soon as you get out the door, boom, you're gone. Pray to God he would just go away, and eventually he did. Good. He grunted and walked off in what I assumed to be the direction of his room. My mind began racing. There is no wife, I thought. Yeah. This man could try and kidnap me. I was 110 pounds at the time and not very strong. Get he could that easily room. overpower me. I locked the room from the inside and went directly to the phone to call my manager at the front desk, but the phone wasn't working. Adrenaline began pumping through my veins, and despite what I was always told not to do, I was panicking. Did he cut the line? No, I thought. This is, this is a crappy motel, it happens all the time, but yeah. I just have to get out. I remembered that I had my cell phone this out on really my housekeeping good. card, but that this was outside so the locked door. I'd have to open the door to get it. I cautiously opened the door to the room that I was cleaning and peered out. I didn't see anyone, so I frantically began searching my cart for nice. my cell phone. Go, 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 go! I was wasting too much time looking for it, so I just decided to run as fast as I could and make a break for the front desk in the office. Good idea! Then from behind me, I heard the man again, but this time he was screaming to someone else, She's running, she's getting away! Oh! I could hear his shoes slamming against the pavement after me. Oh my god! I quickly turned the corner, grabbed my keycard, and let oh, my myself into a stock in. room and locked the door. Within moments, I heard the sound of the dirty guy and someone else running outside, searching for me. I stayed in that stock room for 30 minutes, shaking, until I could no longer hear him searching for me. She was the only I one working that day? I to run the rest of the way to the front desk. When I made it there, I collapsed into my boss's arms and he called the police. The man and whoever else was in the room with him peeled out before the cops could arrive, and I was beyond shaken up. Wow. According to the police who ran a search, this wasn't the first time he had done something like this, and he was actually wanted for sexual assault, gross sexual imposition, and in the past was once charged with rape. Oh, dude. A few weeks later, on what happened to be my birthday, this guy was caught. A few weeks after that, I quit. Good. I will never again work at another motel. Jeez.
Hey, these videos are on point today. Like I told you guys, whenever I play horror games, I hate it when something's chasing me and just watching that guy chasing her. I don't know. I just felt so bad. Like, please don't get caught. Please don't get caught. Obviously, she told the story so she didn't get caught. But it's like, damn. Like, things like that happen all the time to people. And they don't get to tell their stories because, you know, something happens. But, whew. Man, that was a good one. Last video of today's episode is called A Bus Stop Horror Story Animated. I have no bus stop stories, guys. Let's just begin and let's see how scary this is. This happened when I was 17 years old. I would go to the gym three to four times a week and ride the bus home. It was a Sunday and I had just missed my bus, so I had to wait longer for another one. I would have called my parents, but they were out for the evening. Mm. And taxis charged more, so I decided to sit and wait in the bus shelter. It was a cold night and snow had just started peppering the ground. My bus was taking longer than usual, so I got my phone out and listened to some music. Almost an hour had passed. It was freezing and I hadn't seen anyone at all. That was until I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. It was a creepy guy what dressed in thick layers of clothing. He looks like the guy from the motel story! Walking slowly towards me. I knew staring at him would draw more attention, so Maybe I this is while he was still phone. on the run. He sat down at the other end of the shelter and just stared at me. There was something off about him. He seemed like he was either drunk or on drugs. Yeah, he looks like he's horny for he you, my guy. Asked, what does the bus do? I this motherfucker said, what does the bus do? Man, that's when you know you gotta leave. What does the bus... Oh took my... Took out my earphones and said... I think it's delayed because of the snow. Oh, I thought he said, what does he the bus do? I'm the dumbass. And started mumbling to himself. He was really starting to creep me out, so I pretended to be on my phone. After a couple of minutes, I took another look. He moved closer to me. I looked away for a second and heard the sound of him sliding even closer. I turned to him and said, You okay there? He stared at me with glossy eyes, lifted his arm and leaned towards me. Immediately, what the I grabbed heck? my bag and ran as he fell to the ground. I ran down the road trying my hardest not to look back. I kept going. You gotta look got back. To you gotta look back one time for the one time. I turned around to check to see if he was there. And he was! He was gone, so I went uh. to sit down. Feeling relieved, I rested my head on the back of the glass and waited for the bus. Oh! I jolted and turned around to see the same guy staring at me through the glass. <laughs> what, the what the hell is wrong with you? Then he started walking around the shelter towards me. Dude, I'm run. warning you, stay back. I yelled in panic as I was backing up. I wanted to run, but I left my bag in the shelter and I couldn't leave without it. Suddenly, Forget the, bag. the man leaped at me and I quickly it, dude. out of the way. He fell to the ground face first. I froze in shock, then noticed the blood coming from his face. I tried to get a response out of him, but nothing worked. Run! I called the police and paramedics and they arrived shortly after. I told them what had happened, and they told me that the guy was on prescription drugs. They found a photo in his wallet of him and his son. The boy looked just like me, so we assumed he thought I was him. Oh. I later learned that he had lost his son in a custody battle and went off the rails. He was taken away for treatment, and that was the last I saw of him. It looked like the motel that he was at shortly after. in the last video. I have never been on a bus since. Oh, he was right there! Dude was hiding in the bushes! What the heck? You guys saw that? This fool was hiding in the bushes. And I swear, that's the same motel where he was trying to hit on that one girl working there. He was Look at this. Away for treatment. He was waiting that for the fool of the bushes. Of Look, bush tactics. I got my driver's license. I'll pause it at the right after. time. And have never Come on. been on a bus since. There he is. Bam! Horny for that guy, dude. <laughs> oh my god, this dude just waiting there. He was like, I'm going to wait till he drives back. <laughs> like, who waits there? All right, you know what? That was a good story. Not as good as the other ones, but hey, all of these videos, just as a combination, were mwah! They were mwah, mwah, mwah! So if you guys want to see more of this in a future episode, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude! <laughs>